Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome to Alicia and the City. I'm Alicia. It's very, very good to see you here, as always. And today we're going to talk about subject which I've been getting a lot of requests on my social media in my DMs for actually quite a while. And I think um, it's a quite interesting subject. And as you probably notice from my accent, I'm not a native English speaker, but I've been living in New York City for about six years now. And a lot of people ask me how did I learn to speak English so well and uh, what were my tips and tricks and um, why do I sound so much as a New Yorker even though I haven't been living here my whole life. So if you're interested in the subject of learning English, uh, of learning American English, if I must say, then stay tuned because I'm gonna share everything I know. <laughs> All right, so um, the first thing I want to point out is that I don't think in any ways that my English is perfect and I um, clearly understand that I have an accent, but uh, I would say obviously um, as I moved to the United States it's kind of bothered me because my accent was um, way way thicker and um, I also had problem understand um, different accents because um, where I grew up I did learn English but I uh, learned British way of pronouncing words and also you know um, everything I learned was like a very academical <laughs> not very practical English and uh, didn't it did help me quite a lot obviously and uh, I um, granted I learned English uh, for many years before I came to the United States but uh, I still struggled nevertheless so I can only imagine for people who never spoke English before well anyways um, how did I improve uh, my speaking English um, first and foremost the most important part um, is to sort of immerse with the culture and just um, make English a part of your everyday activities and your routines so the first thing I started um, is I started watching all the shows, all the movies, all the news um, in English. I would just turn on TV for a few hours a day and I would just uh, watch Friends, I would watch Gossip Girl and uh, um, I would be honest with you when um, sometimes I wouldn't necessarily understand everything they say um, so I will have to put subtitles, it's okay if you have to do that I would even recommend for someone who, let's say, you don't really have much of a practice in English, I would recommend putting uh, it in English, maybe with um, your first language subtitles, so whatever language you speak, just for you to understand. As long as you're hearing how people formulate sentences, uh, you know, the structure of a speech, and also how they enunciate certain words, I think that would help you tremendously. So as long as you're exposed to, um, to the English, I think um, that would be a great way to start and then um, eventually you transition into English shows and English movies with English subtitles and then eventually you, you wouldn't need English subtitles at all. Um, another thing to mention is that it's important to also read in English and I think um, a lot of people feel terrified because they feel like they're not going to understand anything so they kind of just say I would rather not to do it. It is scary, but um, as I was learning English, one of the mm, most valuable exercises I used to do, I would take an article and I would sort of um, go um, at it piece by piece and I would, you know, um, underline the sentences or the words which I don't understand and I would look them um, up in the dictionary and I would just write them down and then um, another important exercise is to uh, try to formulate sentences um, with those words. Um, so our brains are a bit tricky and just writing down the words um, is not going to be enough for you to learn them but once you actually put them in sentences and you repeat them try to actually have like two to three sentences with each word um, it will trick your brain and it actually will remember it. So next time you will come up with a certain word, your brain will remember and um, you actually would know what that means. Another trick I learned is that as much as it's important to translate words into your own language, I actually found a better way which you will have to probably grow into. I don't recommend to starting with it right away, 
but I actually got, I think it was a Miriam Webster dictionary and it was a huge one. It was like this thick, uh, but I would actually go and I would look up the meaning of a word in English and how people were like, what? But I don't understand English, how I'm supposed to know that? But eventually you will. And even with like a very limited vocabulary, you would actually understand the meaning of the world, word. And um, it also kind of will give you uh, synonyms and it also improves your vocabulary because, uh, for example, when you try to describe certain things, you're not just going to say, oh, it's good or it's beautiful. You would uh, use other adjectives such as um, uh, gorgeous, handsome, cute, lovely, breathtaking, and so on and so forth. So I think uh, it's very important to enrich your vocabulary and I think it's a good way is to actually um, look up words in English and their descriptions in English as well. And obviously, um, being persistent. I know it's nothing new, but even today I still learn new words. I actually enjoy learning them. And I would recommend just making it a regular practice, um, you know, read different kind of literature, obviously read something which interests you, but sometimes I would read an article on some scientific matter, which is not necessarily within my field of interest, just so I can see different terms and termino uh, terminology, um, because, you know, it's good to train your brain and then... Um, I would also recommend reading not just uh, modern authors but also old ones because language used to be a little bit more complicated and a little bit more rich uh, than now and not to say that you will necessarily use those words in your everyday vocabulary but at least I feel like that's gonna give you a little bit more perspective um, and, I'll, and again it's just gonna enrich your vocabulary overall. Um, another thing I want to point out is obviously your environment so um, I know a lot of people who move to the United States, they sort of naturally tend to think with their own kind and there is nothing wrong with that. But I think it's also important to, uh, if for example, you are moving to the United States and you really want to become a part of a culture, I think it's important to hang out with people who are, uh, you know, uh, native speakers or at least, you know, the English is good so you can communicate in English. And um, for me it was important and even with people who spoke my language I would also try to speak in English just you know to practice and um, obviously I try to hang out with people who speak English um, quite a lot so it would force me um, to come out of my comfort zone and communicate in English. Um, another thing to point out is to obviously dedicate uh, time in your day try to do it daily if you can or if you cannot that's okay but um, try to dedicate time to listening uh, because um, as I mentioned you know shows and movies it's a great way to start but also um, another exercise I used to do I would listen to in songs in English and I would actually uh, try to repeat uh, lyrics as I heard them and then I would actually go and google the song and I would try to see if I got it right because, you know, yes, with songs it's a little bit complicated, sometimes uh, lyrics don't really make sense or they kind of, kind of muffled and you cannot really make sense of them. But it's a good uh, training exercise because you can hear one thing and, you know, um, eventually you would, um, as you're going to train your brain to sort of uh, catch those words, you would notice that it's actually becoming more and more e easier for you and you actually start learning, uh, hearing lyrics correctly. And... Um, it's a very helpful exercise and also uh, another tip I, I would say is to listen to podcasts or anything of that matter even if you don't necessarily understand everything and actually try to repeat sentence by sentence so actually you know listen to a sentence or a phrase pause and try to repeat it with the same um, intonation and with the same uh, pronunciation uh, it's not gonna you know be uh, perfect right away it will take a few tries and actually it's pretty good if you can also record yourself and sort of compare the original audio to how you pronounce it maybe even do it in front of a mirror it's a good exercise i think and um eventually you'll get there and i hope that all of those tips were helpful i find that duolingo is a great app uh, for learning languages it's just it's i guess the easiest but there are definitely so many tools and books and exercises you can do uh, for learning any language. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. 
um, as I try to make videos at least twice a week. And I will see you in my next videos. Bye bye.